the word of god is alive and powerful sharper than any two edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart all scripture is god breathed and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction and for instruction in righteousness that the man of god might be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works study to show thyself approved unto god a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth or very accurately handling this very great unique infallible and inerrant great word of truth glory be to my ave sitkanu to the highest the only lord of a god who has revealed himself under the name of yahweh to tell adonai eloheinu adonai echad the only true righteous lord of a god who said jesus christ of lord of a god is the only lord and jesus christ of lord of a god is the only unique person that could ever exist to such great lord of a god be the glory forever to the highest such great lord of a god who has been manifested to tell by our lips in second corinthians chapter 9 thanks be to that great lord for his unspeakable gift incomparable gift by that gift which we come every day now to enjoy and cherish and nourish in the battle of this angelic conflict putting upon the helmet of salvation and taking upon the sword of the spirit which is the rema declarations of the word of the lord of a god such sword of the spirit for any believer on this earth or for any unbeliever on this earth because of their roguish mind of unbelief and for the believers because of their ignorance mind of having not learned Christ having not been taught Christ having not put on the new man which has to be there in the terms of endikai sune kai hosiate is this alatia by renewing the spirit of their mind no matter whatever the situation may be in their lives the word of the lord of a god is the only solution for that demand anything that is having problem concerning you the temptations the lustful patterns of money or cupidity whatever you may call there is a solution for that in the bible people love to go and take the rehabilitation centers or drug addiction centers to get relieved of that but the only design if they would wake up to understand the way they have been flinged in the womb of the mother because of having only yahweh elohim as their god that's what we read in psalms 2211 i have been flung shalak I have been taken by the ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit at the moment of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone to get yourself flung into the royal family of God after having your physical birth reaching your God consciousness to understand about your spiritual birth in Christ This is what we learn after the completion of canon of scripture in our hands to realize what are we in Christ the word that became flesh and dwelt among us the completed canon which has been further emphasized by Ephesians, Philippians and Colossians to understand your use of your principle in the law of a god so that for every situation for every occurrence there is a solution for it so that there is nothing that you can go in the faces of your enemy without having any vigor in you and to grow up in that vigor and practice in that valor of our lord of a god we need to walk in the spirit by that i mean lord god the holy spirit the new man not in the terms of pneumatic not in the terms of sukikas or sarkikas soulish or carnal but only in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit you need to walk in the spirit of truth no one can see it the demonstrative pronoun which you have which you have been noted in one of our previous tape replying back to the dad's discourse 
the masculine gender which has been used it will be the male spiritual bona fide gifted pastor teachers who have been sent by the lord of god in the power of the spirit working in him says even colossians 1 29 the discourse that what we are having to learn about the word of the Lord of God comparing to the ministry which was been given to Apostle Paul to train and to teach to them very specifically so that they can wake up to the reality of the word and we are talking to the Christendom crowd why they couldn't chop into pieces the discourse of debates given by such roguish oriented minds the failure is with us the failure is over here so that you are not able to wake up to understand the truth every day the failure is is with this congregation where they have not desired to know the truth the same thing happened in the corinthians time if they would daily learn the word of the Lord of our God, there is no way that there could be anything against the knowledge of the Lord of Christ. Could be reigning to tell, yes, I defeated the Bible, I defeated the reasoning, I defeated the logics. If you have been there in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit living in him and walking in him daily by growing up in the mind of Christ, word by word, line upon line, precept upon precept, then you would even realize that right from the womb of your mother's belly when you have been flung into it, it is because to tell that Yahweh Elohim is my only Lord, my rock, my God, my salvation. Because of him I am alive, because of him I have been given this birth, because of him I have everything in my breath, because of him I have been designed to really get glory to the Lord of God. Therefore Isaiah 43, 7, and everyone who I made, whom I have formed, whom I have called, I have called them for my glory. And man has been made in the image of God, very specifically not comparing even to the natures. When the heavens declared the firmament of the Lord of a God, that's a different glory. When the nature readily obeys the commandments of the Lord of our God, when he was been there to walk on the sea and to hush it down so that it could get relaxed, that's a different glory. The physical body, what we have, that's a different glory to glorify him in this all sin nature though it resides in us constantly yet being called after believing in Christ to put on the new man of Lord God the Holy Spirit so that the Lord God the Holy Spirit can control your newly created human spirit the new man which has been made in the terms of only if you have learned if you have understood if you have been taught the power of the controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit to your new man Though you have the old sin nature in you, in a physical body, you have been called to put on Christ. You have been called to learn Christ. You have been called to get every thought into captivity for Christ. And what else? You have been given the greatest privilege and the greatest authority and the greatest work. So that you can glorify a lot of a God in your body, says 1 Corinthians 6, 19. The right translation has only body. Not the new of you. And God created man in his own image, left for us a great example of his son, so that we can understand the true calling in Christ, the true privilege in Christ. And we have no other standards for us apart from Christ, our Lord of our God, wherewith we need to walk in him, says 1 John 2 6. Not having any reasons or excuses to raise your human failures, human thoughts. But you enjoy in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, constantly at every breath of your life, so that you can now discern between right and good. You can discern between the hypocritical mask men of the Christendom and the people who really cherish and nourish by searching those things that are true, that have virtue, that are pure, that are honest. In the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, only when you live in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, or when you are alive in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, then only you can walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that when you are walking in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, it takes to you that which the Bible tells and it cleanses the garbage that is there in your soul. And that's what many people fail to realize this importance. 
therefore not having the vigor being trained every day in the mind of Christ they go to such discourses they go to such debates and what do they prove <laughs> they prove themselves being chopped off but not able to chop the debates of such men and they could realize this is something far higher than my human reasoning and to depart from that place and simply receive Christ our Lord of a God <laughs> not a challenge to keep that he is going to keep his head under Galitan show me one verse in the Bible so that Christ our Lord of a God said he is God so that Christ our Lord of a God said worship me then I will certainly be baptized tonight. That's what Dida tells in one of his tape. And for this 10 minutes, I challenge you, my head has been kept up on the gully tan. Show me one verse. Why the pastor failed to show the verse? Not being in the fellowship of God, the Holy Spirit, that's why. If that is one of the primary reasons, the secondary reason will be more above than that. The primary reason it is that they have not daily graduating in the mind of Christ. Every day learning, every day growing up. Therefore, they lose before the faces of their enemies, not having any vigor. They let it go so simply. And does not Lamentations chapter 1 teaches for us in verse number 6? The Hebrew word Shri, if not the chiefs, have strayed away out of the pastures. If the committee elders of the church are not having sound Bible doctrine in their mind, it's as simple as to say the chiefs have lost pasture from their mind. And why we require the elders? so that they can certainly look into the matter of enemies in their vigor. Appointing a pastor, taking a church member, or taking such and such things. Does not Ezra was been told by an unbelieving king, extra Xerxes, Lord of a God, Lord your God has given you the wisdom according to that you appoint the elders. The same thing when Timothy was being sent. According to the standards of the rule of the mind of Christ, you go and appoint and order them in that work. But today's Christendom, don't search the deep things of God by the fellowship of let get the Holy Spirit. They are unwritten blaspheming my Lord's name, my Lord's word to be kept under that gully town. If you would have done your work faithfully, by that I refer even today, the Christendom where they are failing to daily teach the mind of Christ. Daily understand that if they have been getting out of the slumber sleep, so that Christ our Lord our God could shine in them, that's what Ephesians 5.14 writes for us. To blepe, to look mentally discerned and to circumspectly to walk acribos to the demands of the word of the Lord of a God so that they could look not to be unwise but they could be wise and to be called as wise. It will not happen in a overnight in a vision or a dream for you to become wise from unwise. It takes time for you to learn. Because the stigma of the old sin nature will not let you go so easily. It says for you, look upon your belly. It says for you, look upon the lustful flesh. You come only once to the world, enjoy. It says for you, why do you want to be with the present husband? You be with me, the ex-boyfriend, so that we can enjoy, we can cherish, we can nourish, and we can certainly make our time in the clubs and the pubs. And weekly ones go to the church and what the church requires, pay them some money. Does not Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 8 says, Though I have given them such warning, they are not able to return back. In spite of giving them so much of grace, they are not able to come back. And what do they think their life is all about? <laughs> Dear brethren, their life is all about to think as religion, as Christianity. 
as the religion oriented man keeps some rituals without having some meaning in it Christianity is also following the trends of rituals that's what we read the Hebrew word Avan the iniquity a W E N and that one alphabet W has been replaced by A M E N by the church today I haven't meant to say nothingness I haven't meant to say vain and the people called today the vain ritual show as amen they tell yes this is right this is correct come weekly once to the church give your tithes do some charity works but the only primary work wherewith they have to walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, be controlled of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by using the privacy of their priesthood, the only primary work that they have to do and call it as Amen is to learn the word of the Lord of our God every day. Is nothing, there is nothing that you require to pay to the Lord of our God. It is graciously given to you freely. He is not happy with your sacrifices. He is not happy with your life to be given in the terms to tell, I give to the Lord such and such things. The gift of helps, they know how to give and they will give it as righteously. Not in the masks of your hypocritical life that you are going to wear today in the Christian town. To prove and to approve to the Lord to say, yes, I have done great things, I have done good things, I have done best things. Throw it out from your mind. The greatest problem in the Christendom is that the way how Ananias and Sapphira had a rebellious, jealous nature against Barnabas. The same thing they have today. So you may ask why instantly there is not an action like Ananias and Barnabas. Because of the investment that has been bestowed upon every believer, dear brethren. Every believer has been given the equal privilege and equal opportunity to worship our Lord of our God to the most. You have been there in placement of the greatest Baltimore privileges of the highest and the holiest and the loftiest privileges that has been ever given in this church. In the past dispensation it was not. In the future dispensation it is not. The present dispensation is the only term. We have been given the Baltimore privileges of the greatest one of baptism of Ladgar, the Holy Spirit. And yet we aren't even able to be like the Queen Sheba when she came and said to King Solomon's porch and everything when she saw, I have heard only half of it. Even likewise, when we have been there in the Christendom of the Church Age, given for us to have breath in our nostrils, we have been given Deuteronomy 29, 29, the completed canon scripture, which is only half. Yet there are many things for us to learn in the heaven. Those heavenly things are totally different in comparison to the things that now we are having in the earthly realm of this church. But yet this is enough for us. The 66 books. And if the bona fide gifted pastor teachers go along to teach and to train them up in these terms of the mind of Christ every day, they will find it's not possible for them to complete the divine illumination. Every word has much a meaning. Every word has a different facets of the teaching. Every word speaks the edification for your soul to important to give you that you shall not grieve and squelch and go against the mind of Christ of Lord God, the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. You have everything. It will take much of time, very much of time. As in the millennium, though he is a hundred years old, he will be still like a child. The word which says he will be having the vigor of his strength in that man, in that manner. The same thing what we it has been written for us in the Bible will be experienced by those bona fide gifted pastor teachers of the immortality of their souls. Apostle Paul believed he is immortal until the work of Christ our Lord of our God has been done. He never counted about his age. That we are passing from 20s to 40s, from 40s to 60s, or 60s to 80s. He never worried about it. He knew only one thing, I need to finish and I need to fight a good fight to the Lord of God. He said while he was living, it is, it is to live for Christ is gain. And in fact, when to die for Christ is also much more gain for me. The material gain, what he required. To understand in the minds of those men who are listening to that discourse. 
Your material gain is nothing in comparison to the spiritual gain what we have in Christ. And yet I have much gain in the Lord. The creator of the heaven and the earth. The Lord of a God who is my God from the belly of my mother's womb. I have been put into the belly of my mother's womb because of Yahweh Elohim who is my Lord, my rock, my God, my salvation. It has been put in the womb of the mother's belly because he is the only rock, my Lord, my rock, my God, my salvation. How true it would be when the people will realize this great words in Christ. How great it would be when the parents will wake up to realize this calling in Christ. But in today's Christendom, dear brother, <laughs> the people look upon to think. Even the unbelievers, when they have the life, the divine spark, at least they could save any human being on this earth who has been born by the copulation of their parents. That's what they think. The copulation of the parents yielding them according to the will of man and flesh. They are not being born by the will of God. But yet there is a grace of the Lord our God to show them the right path. Even unbelievers when we can tell them the peace and the security and the salvation what we have to one of the vital organs of the body which is nothing but the brain, the helmet of salvation which we wear. So that we have the great peace in Christ, we have the great joy in Christ, we have everything in Christ. Therefore, we read in John 16, 20, the world will be joying, but you will be in sorrow. Because we know our sorrow will be converted into greater joy in Christ. Do you know why we will be in sorrow? Why we will lament and why we will weep? Because the word of the Lord, my rock, my God, my salvation is not been honored above his name. The greater lamentation what we look today is in the pulpits. The so-called pastor teachers who are entering into the pulpits to teach to you all the joy which they think, but not the true joy what we have in Christ every day. Those who wait, says the word of the Lord of our God in Proverbs 8.34 upon my doorpost daily yesterday, today, tomorrow, yesterday, today, tomorrow, day by day. That's what it says in the KJV but in the Hebrew it's the same yesterday, today and tomorrow. What do they do? They love the Lord of our God and what do they find? They find favor of the Lord. But the one who doesn't come to walk in the strength of the joy of the Lord of our God every day, what does he do? He is certainly wrong, making wrong against his own soul or is sinning against his own soul. And those who hate the word of the Lord of our God, what the Bible says, they shall love death. The logic is very simple in the mind of Christ. The so-called pastors today, why we find the death so many in the churches, being youth, being in ang. The greatest burden for which they have been called so that Christ of the Lord of our God is shining in their lives when they are in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to understand by putting upon the new man which has been made in the mannerism of holiness and in the benignity of truth. And to seek and search those things that are right, that are perfect, that are correct. The mannerism wherewith they fail to learn those things, the mannerism wherewith they fail to teach those things is purely for one reason, not being in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. There is nothing greater debating genius on this earth who thinks he can have his logic proved going against the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit and against the mind of Christ. Even an ordinary believer in Christ who has been faithful enough like the way how we read in our lessons to tell the parable the tortoise and the rabbit race the one who is like tortoise every day gradually will win the race why can't a rabbit win a rabbit thinks the tortoise is far away and let me sleep under the tree for a while by the meantime tortoise crosses the line 
every believer ought to be like a tortoise for the purpose of daily graduating step by step word by word line by line precept upon precept not just to tell that I have read the Bible in one week, I have read the Bible in 15 days, I have read the Bible in 30 days. <laughs> Nothing you can understand from that. In fact, when indeed, when we expound the word of the Lord our God, every word, it takes so much of time. And we are not able to even complete. How can you tell that you are reading the Bible of your own sense and you can understand without understanding the isological background, categorical background and the things pertaining to exegetical background and with the right dispensing technique of dispensations and learn and listen the truth. And yet they find to look upon those qualified pastors. The world looks upon such qualifying pastors who have their theological seminary discipline and they have their degrees. And they say, I've been passed in such and such things. I'm coming and doing what? What the committee says. Coming and doing what the diocese says. But what the Bible demands. Have you ever have and taken the thought of Acrebos? Were not before the Reformation movement, those great men who left out the privileges of Roman Catholicism and came back to certainly fight for the truth when you will wake up we know one thing until and unless there is a greater famine and pestilence or any sort of sicknesses that could come upon them they will never wake up to the reality do you know why they will never wake up they look their safety zone <laughs> that's why is my family secured are my children happy on the privileges given by the Roman Catholics so that they can get a good education, they can get a good job, they can get a good college seat, free of, free of fees exemption? When my family is safe, when I am safe on this earth, why do I worry about the systems? Why do I worry about the things that are happening in the Christendom? What they require, weekly ones, they're coming, teach some stories, send them back home, receive your offering or receive your salary at the end of your month and be happy. Again, you tell happy. <laughs> if you don't realize the truth in Christ, dear brethren, then you need to realize you have not been taught and you have been taken your life not to hear such teachings in Christ. In simple terms, you have not heard, neither you have been taught because of your ignorance. Lord of a God's hand is not short to teach about the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit to tell, if you ask fish, do I get snake? How much more will he not give us graciously the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit? Why you need to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in the church age. After the completion of can of scripture, it is not that you ask for the Spirit, but at the moment of salvation, Lord God, the Holy Spirit permanently indwells in you by making you to be the sealing ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the earnest deposit of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and being baptized in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. You haven't even really understood about such terms. And the crowd still stop in the Gospels, in the Corinthians and they tell yes we are still doing great things we have to speak in tongues then only the Spirit has been received for us blasphemy but the Spirit of Truth has made you to be the noun temple of the Lord not hierarchs to be outside but noun the inner sanctuary the Shekinah glory and he has to control your every breath of your life so that we have been told constantly, walk, peripata, or walk, walk, walk. Walk in Lord God, the Holy Spirit. When you live in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, then only you can walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. How can you live in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit? Number one thing, it has to be a believer. Believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. The 40 things that will happen to you at the moment of salvation for every believer in Christ. So that though the believer is like a tortoise and the believer is like a rabbit, both are being bought under one equal terms of spiritual IK, no partiality. 
their human IQ plus the feeling of Latgar, the Holy Spirit or the controlling mentoring ministry of Latgar, the Holy Spirit is the resultant of spiritual IQ for every believer given equal privilege and equal opportunity to serve my Christ. But what is the means to serve my Christ? In the fellowship of Latgar, the Holy Spirit, in the arena of Latgar, the Holy Spirit. Without Latgar, the Holy Spirit to control you. Therefore, we tell constantly at every beginning of our tape to use rebound and to be in the privacy of your prayer to tell so that you can understand the teaching, what we are teaching to you every day, so that Latgar, the Holy Spirit, should enlighten us and challenge us. Without Latgar, the Holy Spirit, you cannot even, Lord, you cannot even call my Lord as Lord, Kurias. Every breath that you take, it is in the fellowship of Latgar, the Holy Spirit. Every move you make, it is in the fellowship of Latgar, the Holy Spirit. It ought to be by walking in the fellowship of Latgar, the Holy Spirit. You may think you are using your human reasoning, but remember, it's the grace of the Lord our God that today or tomorrow, yet you will come back and listen to the mind of Christ. So, though you grieve and squelch and lie to the indwelling man from ministry of Latgar, the Holy Spirit, dear brethren, you are being yet kept alive. At least tomorrow you will come again. Today the day is gone. Again tomorrow you come again. Therefore Lamentations chapter 3 verses 21 and following. This is what I recollect to my mind. Have you known what it is to recollect in your mind at every breath of your life? Have you known when the name of my Lord, my Rock, my God, my salvation has been blasphemed by those unbelievers and yet you keep quiet? David didn't do so. David was a man after God's own heart because he was following to delight in the word of the Lord our God every day. And he knew the purpose when he's writing in the book of Psalms all the time. And he tells for us in Psalms 22 verses 11, From the womb of my mother, O Lord, I was been flinged in so that you can understand, so that we, I can understand that you are my Lord, my rock, from the mother's womb. If you know that without breath you cannot survive, more than the breath is the word of the Lord of our God to realize for you that without Him I cannot survive. Without His word I cannot survive. Look under the emergency cases whenever you look into the hospital. People run to tell, provide the oxygen, provide the blood, if not He will die. <laughs> more than that, King David writes for us through the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, because the way how he has been called a man after God's own heart, he tells, From my mother's womb, I trusted my Lord, I put my trust in him, and he is the one who is my God, therefore I will be born on this earth. What a privilege it would be when we understand those things. Therefore, John 1-12, who have been born according to the will of God the Father in heaven, the godly seed in this intensified stage of the angelic conflict of spiritual battle that goes on every day, every breath. The unbelievers are nowhere to be accounted for us to think. The biological science will teach to you the 23 plus 23 chromosomes being fertilized. But we look the spiritual chromosomes to understand how it has been fertilized because unless it is not the will of Lord God the Father to provide them the child. Like the way how John the Baptist was being born, or the seed of Isaac, seed of Abraham through Isaac, not through Ishmael, but through Isaac, making them the covenant. And it is in the will of God the Father very clearly says in Ephesians 1 to teach before the foundation of the world of a Lord of our God has chosen you to be holy and blameless to the praise of his glory and his grace. And in fact, even when we read Haggai to teach, the just shall live by faith. And when we come to this world, reaching God consciousness in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit every day, seeking and searching the truth, because we live in the midst of such mask-oriented Christian pastors and believers, who haven't even known the importance of the Bible, which is so essential for us. Without that, we cannot live. Without that, we cannot survive. Without that, we cannot even imagine our life or every thought. 
in the midst of such cleft taste, lust taste, misthought taste, two past, canapé, stiff loss, and sureness oriented minded pastors who haven't given importance day upon day to learn word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept. Yet when we pray to the Lord of our God in his plan, what he has chosen for us to be faithful for our work for which he has chosen, he reveals for us those bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teachers to train us up irrespective of your geographical location because we come in one spirit to tell Lord of our God is our witness and we tell Homer to Madan with one mind, with one passion, with one accord. And what does he do? He trains us up. From the kleptes to show us oriented pastors when they fail to train your parents, their parents will fail to wean their children. <laughs> the unweaned children. Not the Narims like Jeremia. Because Jeremia was being weaned from their mother's time to teach them the importance of the word of the Lord of God. Neither like the Narims, which came along to tell about Elisha. And he cursed upon them by pulling down a beard. So that it could tear and eat them down. The Narims of the present Christendom as well. Who haven't grown up to take the responsibilities of the importance of the word of the Lord of God every day. And this ovals who have been there to be weaned every day, if the parents fail to wean them, then when and how will the kid will nourish up to understand, yes, from my mother's womb, I have been put my trust in the Lord and I came to this world. It is not only just a part of everyone who thinks. That it is only for Christ, it is only for Jeremy, it is only for Paul. No, it's for, in fact, indeed, for every believer in Christ after the completion of canon of scriptures as Ephesians 1 and following. You are in place in your mother's womb before the foundation of the world so that you can understand why are you coming into this earth? Why are you being flung and forced into come to this earth? And when you are coming, you need to understand that Yahweh Elohim is my Lord. Yahweh Elohim is my salvation. Lord Jesus Christ, which has been manifested for us by the revealing mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. When we are in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit alone. And when we live in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Then we can produce to learn the character of Christ. And who is character of Christ? Yahweh Elohim. What is that? He tells again in Proverbs 8.22. In righteousness and in justice I treat along. Furthermore, when we come to Ephesians 4, he tells it is not just righteousness and justice being put together to be called as holiness. And he tells that holiness will be concerned to you only when you walk in the benignity of truth. That's as simple as that. Benignity of truth. What a privilege it is for us to understand these things in Christ. You are far away above than the Old Testament teaching what you have in the New Testament. But yet the Old Testament teaching gives you the mechanics of every word that has been written for us in the New Testament. That's what we call categorization of the scriptures. But in the proper isagogical background and with the proper exegesis, you will have that great power and vigor and valor that there is nothing that can stand against you to open and to tell that that Bible is wrong. Like the Ziza, like the Dida, the Zakir Nayak or anyone who can come along on the path or even in the future. You will laugh at their inconsistencies to give their logic from premises to conclusion. Being in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit being trained every day. What do you do? Do you know that? Either from the conclusion or premise or the, from the logical reasonings what they give, you take and you chop them into pieces. That's the real power for every believer given to us. Every believer in the church age before the foundation of the world to, to being planned and predestined, that's what the word calls. In the pro gonisco and the pro horizon knowledge of the Lord of our God, he has been predestined. You have a destiny in Christ. Do you know what it is? Not only just to conform to the image of his Christ, of his dear beloved son. But furthermore, he writes in Ephesians 4 to teach us. 
to the mature standards in Christ. Not like the Nepios, but the mature standard in Christ. Therefore, Paul was been given a special ministry to train every believer to be perfect and complete in the knowledge of the Lord of our God. Therefore, he tells in Galatians 4.19, the greatest once used word, morphete. Never used again in the Bible, the only once importance of that word. To build you up in the image of Christ, morphete. Not to exchange to the things of this earth, but to build you up. What a privilege it would be for us. When we would be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and when we would have been alive during the time of Apostle Paul and during the time of those great men who rightly divided the word of the Lord of God in the original language of the scriptures. Taking the same vocabulary which Jeremiah has written to Ezekiel, to Daniel, was being blessed on that. And when you read the same things what Jeremiah told, Daniel also writes in the original languages. And we also go with one spirit, the teachings which have been taught for us, line down from Apostle Paul till to the present 21st century. And we teach nothing but the truth because we can do nothing against the truth. We are only for the truth. And yet there are men who love to go along in the reasonings of their minds. Without being a believer in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There is nothing that this world can offer you while you are still having breath in your nostrils on this earth. The world would better offer you sheer rats. The world will better offer you the rationalism and the empiricism. The world will better offer you not to believe the truth because you have been blinded, says Second Corinthians 4.4. If it were not by the gospel of the light, by the lives of those Christian and men who walk in integrity and in truth in the Christ word, not having to live their life for filthy liqueurs and lusts. <laughs> because in my country, India, being a movie is real, that's what, in the terms of cinema, that's what we can call. There are much people who watch much of the time in the cinema or in the movies. Every Christian has been taken to the most as a criminal. To the most wearing a cross and doing the deeds of criminality. The intention of the, doc of the director behind that we do not know, but when we look upon that assessment we can think to the world of my country, India, Christianity has been represented as an evil thing because you can find those men who are not able to walk in the integrity of truth. Either they are drunkards, rapists, murderers, and they use very specifically the Christian names. <laughs> Dear brethren, Though it may be having nothing to do with the reality of the life, the director intention may not be with that. But the characters, what those Christian names have been represented, they have been there really in the lives of this man on this earth. He will be a murderer. He will be a liar. He will be disobedient to the parents. He will be a rapist, he will be a drug addict, he will be a narcotic, he will be improving his life upon the terms of tranquilizers. Are they not like this man in real life? Who certainly look upon their greatest sexual temptations in the pubs. Longing upon half-naked women and coming and sitting in the pews. Early morning Sunday service church, as if they are saints. Is this what you think you can represent to the world? Is this what how you can be renovated in the standards of this world? My Christ is not such. He has called you as a Christian. Without Christ you are nothing. To remember that word, he has kept you as Christian. 
What do Christians walk? They walk in peace, pursuing as much as it is possible to the patience of them so that they can understand, they can win Christ in their lives and show them their true life, true eternal life. And if you represent them as nothing, then what you will find? You will find 0, 0.00 of Christianity in your life. And above all, you leave a black mark to tell, yes, he is a liar and why, how, how, how and which God he is, that he is teaching them such lies. The moral standards of my country, India, are great. Far less we can come to the virtue standards of Christ in their minds. Do you know why? They don't represent the truth at each and every facet of their life. I don't deny that they have to be so humble and so simple, so simple. But as the cunning knowledge of the word of the Lord of God has been given for you because you have been sent among the wolves. You have been sent in the midst of wolves to represent Christ. And it should be pure as dove. And it shall be more wise than serpent. Because the word of the Lord of our God gives us everything. Because you have a purpose in life, you have a meaning in life, you have a definition in life, you have a great witnessing for this truth in this life as far as you have been having breath in your nostrils. Then we cannot let go the truth. We cannot let go even a single foot. Living that the place where you walked to the glory of Lord of our God before being believers and going grow and, and to grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, you are still morons, but when you wake up, you cannot be calling yourself that I'm still an unwinned child because of this great intense first stage of the angelic conflict. Time is short for us. Such great time which is so short. You do not know when is the death, you do not know when is the rapture. Yet you say, I have plenty of time to see my children and great-grandchildren as well. Your life is not in that. Your life is to see from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21. Have you seen the children of children of children in the Bible when you expound that word? That word leads to another word and that another word leads to another word. And when you have the time for you to realize the categories of the subject to be edified according to the right mind of Christ, do you know how much time it will take for you to complete the Bible? It will be greater time for you to realize that your children's children's children or great 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 grandchildren are also nothing before that. Why the people represent so falsely? I'm talking about the Christianity. If there is a girl who has been newly married, she goes to the in-law's house and if the husband tells, did not your mother teach to you how to behave after you get married? The principal point of learning from where it should come, the mother to the daughters. In the same terms, for every believer, among the midst of these unbelievers, when they represent not Christ accurately, the unbelievers will think what, what type of a God he is. Did he make them to drink? Did he make them to practice adultery? And why we need to believe such Christian gods? By the time in the Trinity, gods. Why we should believe such God and practice our lives to be in such immorality? Who has to train such believers not to behave like that, not to show forth of Christ as like that, and represent Christ as not to be behooved to him to be called a saint in the world? Who has to train them up? The parents, while they are still yet to be weaned with milk. And the parents train them up after the Sunday school, they need to enter to learn the word from the right bona fide gifted pastor teacher, following not <laughs> the youths thinking that we will have a youth pastor thinking that we will do this we will do that no the bona fide gifted pastor teacher trains those adult oriented men who have been eating the meat 
and he takes care of them and he tells to see these kids who have been there in Christ, who have to be in Christ, to be fully developed, to be fully grown up and to train them up because the pastor is busy in the schedule of teaching the word from morning and evening. And those who will be termed as Sunday school or those who will be coming to be formed as youth, they should be trained by such mature men again so that their conduct of behavior should be fleed from youthful lusts, should be fleed from cupidity, and to have in their minds only one goal, to honor his word above his name. It is no longer that what we look, it is Christ who has to be appeared in us, his words, his thoughts. But yet we find men in the church, in the minds of the pastors themselves, no Christ, no Christos. If not, <coughs> they would realize their duty. They would wake up to the calling in Christ every day. Not they would be weakly ones. If we can find out the unbelievers being greater on this earth, the traitors which have been there in the present Christendom are far greater than those unbelievers in number, in quantity. Do you know why? If they would realize their work in Christ according to the demands of the word of the Lord of God, they would make this place with vigor and valor, with the great joy and peace of the Lord of God, as a place of truth, whether they hear or forbear, whether this man wants to prove that Bible is wrong and we believe the verbal inspiration and they believe the theonostos of the Lord of God, God's inspiration word, whether they believe it or not, and the way how we are teaching to them, if they are not able to understand them it or not, the word is word, the truth is truth, that's it. It would only prove the roguish mind of their thinking, that's it. But the word is infallible and inerrant. Today I may be tomorrow someone or after tomorrow someone, but the word is word. It's written, it stands written. It's your hard heartened attitude towards not to believe the truth in your prejudiced minds and thoughts being raised by satan being blinded in your words that's why many people are perishing without knowing the truth and where there is no proper revelation of the word of the lord of god there the people will perish at the scripture long back but the righteousness of the nation will exalt it what are the righteousness of the nation that we need to walk only in truth The client nation which has been there, USA, right now for the Lord of a God. If it doesn't go to build back again in truth, it is going to lose. That's it. And to which nation our Lord of a God seems fit that it has to be walking in truth? He gives back to that. Because the righteousness of the nation will exalt it. Walking in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Living in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Yielding unto the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by not grieving, squelching and lying to it, but being in the fellowship of the truth all the time. Every breath we have been told to redeem the time, to redeem the time in the terms of Kairos moments, in the, chronos, in the chronological time given to you. So that what you need to do to understand the will of God, the Father in heaven, Ephesians 5.17. Why we need to purchase the time? Because you need to understand what is the will of God the Father in heaven. What is the will of God the Father in heaven? Number one, use rebound if you are a believer in Christ. Number two, be in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit after using rebound. So that you can understand the faith of the word of the Lord of our God. There is nothing that can go against the mind of Christ. Though you have your translations, if they have been not properly expounded by the scriptures, they have some essence in it. And if the pastor teachers who have been there with the bona fide gift, they have to make it clear. And Lord's hand of a Lord of a God is not short to provide you those bona fide gifted pastor teachers whose duty is to teach and to study and to study and to teach and you feed you with knowledge and with understanding day in and day out. 
Our Lord's hand is not too short to provide for you. Those men, when they have been training you, you can go and chop off such didats, discourse in the debates by taking the Bible without even looking into it from the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic when they have been properly trained. No matter whatever premise they take, whatever conclusion they may take, you tell them that's a rogash mind and you tell them what is the truth and expound them to the world to teach that that they should be getting afraid to talk anything about my Bible, my Christ. Far less they can prove they have failed to show forth our Lord has not been resurrected. Far, far, far less they can prove he's not been incarnated. Far less they can prove about his crucifixion and tell that he has read his crucifixion or fiction. That's what he writes in his banner and he wants to provide in the tapes. <laughs> And no one verse in the Bible to tell that's what he claims. That Jesus Christ said he is God. What a sad part it is by those pastors who entertain in such debates. Not having their work perfect first. When their obedience is ready, then they can get back to their disobedience. When our obedience is ready, says 2 Corinthians 5. To get every thought into captivity for Christ. When our obedience is ready, then we can get. What is your obedience? The daily function of gap. When you are not having your obedience ready over here to learn the word, then you will go to such debates, then you will be chopped off. And get blasphemy towards my Lord's name again. People love to watch such debates. They, they know whether it is not a right teaching from them. And they say, yes, this man is great in his debating technique. You, being the least one, is greater than John the Baptist. Far less Didat could be compared to my Bible's teaching and tell that he's great. Then how much duty you have upon your shoulders to have your obedience to be ready in Christ? And then to what you realize? lies you prove and probe to the fact that you are liars you are not an obedient one to the mind of Christ and to his word to grow up every day you are not an obedient one to start up the re-reformation movement to put upon the heads of those pulpits oriented pastors who fail to teach the word of the Lord of God every day and take an anvil and the original language of the scriptures of the word and put upon their forehead and to tell we need renovation in our minds. Without the word of the Lord of God we don't have any life. That's what you need to tell to such pastors to teach them the truth from the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. Forget about the translations. Though they may seem closer to you, though they may seem real to you, but the content and the context of the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic is far superior. So that the roguish mind of men, when they come to debate, they are nothing to be presented before thee. But the thing that has been required for you to understand, the prime duty of the pastor teacher as well, the marine my care towards the church, if they're not proving that work every day, then certainly you will end up to get blasphemy to that great name of the Lord of God on this earth. Besides on this earth, you may enjoy by exchanging of that great name of the Lord of God for the glory of this world's shame. But remember, in the eternity you will have at the judgment seat of Christ to be judged with a greater punishment. That's what James 3.1 tells, a very great punishment. Better to live few days, to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, every breath, and to honor His word, though being martyred, we don't worry. For Christ has a witness, and if our Lord our God finds His grace for us much and more, to be mortal until the work of Christ, our Lord our God, has been done in our lives. As long as He seems fit for us to keep us alive on this earth, and if He realizes for the things pertaining to his rapture, then we are helpless. But yet, he is gracious, he is long-suffering and he is patient. Second Peter 3, 9 None should perish, but everyone should come to the great knowledge of this truth.
God's will says First Timothy 2 4 everyone to be saved and come to the great knowledge of Epinosos knowledge of his mind you haven't really understood the mystery doctrine of 1 Corinthians 2 7 which teaches to us that is there in the mind of Christ to reveal for us how can you learn it if you don't wake up to realize the true purpose in Christ Dear brethren, think over these issues. If you don't have the helmet of salvation, if you can understand the helmet for your head, which is going to cover the vital organ of the body, among all the parts of the body, from where the head goes to operate each and every hand, leg, or every movement of your body. <laughs> Men love it to become like robots, but they don't want to look upon the real creation of God. That's what the today's Christendom mechanisms are going along. And if you don't have your helmet of salvation, remember Christ, that he is our helmet of salvation. And if you don't have your weapon secured in you, the weapon of his word of the Spirit, the Rima declarations of the word of the Lord our God, then you're going to lose that which is for us. The greatest privilege to get honor and glory to our Lord our God by all means, no matter whatever it is in this earth, no matter whatever force that can come against you, remember you have the one indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Greater is the one that is in us than the one who is in this world to fight against all such odds. Only through His Word. So think over these issues, dear brethren, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow in the same divine illumination of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Every day we go having a pain in our heart. When and how the reformation movement once again will begin, the re-reformation movement. The daily teaching of the word of the Lord of our God in our pulpits. Word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept. Those faithful men who love to walk in this truth every day. What a privilege it would be. What a privilege it would be when we cast all our cares upon him, for he careth for us. What a privilege it would be for us who said, My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come and take it. Why do you worry about the things of this earth? Why do you want to exchange the great glory of the Lord of our God for this earth? Foolishness it is. You profess to be wise by not understanding the acribos of the word which tells what are the demands of the word of the Lord of our God and if you are not able to meet them. You profess to be wise but in return you are fools. Not realizing the mind of Christ and his work every day. Yet our Lord of our God is gracious in his grace. To give you day by day the renovation of your mind to be calling to your heart. Because of his grace and mercy, I'm alive. And if you tell tomorrow again, if you're alive, Lord, what is thy will? His will is to do Lord's work. What it is? To represent Christ as a king. To represent Christ in writing down the word at least once in your life. Kneeling down in his presence, I prefer. And I go to write for three times. Once in the in uninspired word, second time in the interlinear, the third time in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. No matter however it may time it may take, 20 years, let it go. Nothing on this earth more worthwhile to spend our life for his work. We have been born to be a king, to witness the truth at every facet of the life that we go through. Why to worry about these things on this earth? He provides for us. Jehovah Ire, he provides for us. He provided for us the great unspeakable gift, Christ his Son. How much more now will he not provide for us when he are his Son? Because while we were at enemies, he provided Christ for our Lord, our God, as our Savior. That now we belong to his royal family. Do you not know how much he's going to provide for us? Wake up to learn the truth. And honor his word above his name. Wake up and exegete the word isagogically, categorically, with the right dispensing technique of dispensations. Word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept, every day, every day, every day. And attached to the fact that I have been born to witness as King Christ. Think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow.
with our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order, I will tell him to Lord God the Father that he believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my rock, my God, my salvation. That is the moment itself, you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for so very simple, believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest merit is to carry Sothon Lagan, herald the word in season or out of season, because the diamond my witnesses wherewith they have been called. The number one diamond of my witnesses in dwelling Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands, and number two diamond of my witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brethren, not worry besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses. But what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of the Lord our God, no matter how ever the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brethren, you decide. But we shall go on to teach the word, though we being martyred in Christ. Father, once again we come unto the grace. We are thankful for this privilege, O Lord, which you have given to us. What a great plan of you it is, O Lord, for us, for the sinful mankind on this earth. Having the circumcision of our ears and heart and spirit. To witness for the truth on this earth. Besides that, no great privilege for us on this earth, O Lord. Strengthen us, O Lord, lead us for the truth as we fellowship in thee every day. And walk at every breath of our life in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to realize only thy truth and witness only thy truth. Till the work could be done, O oh Lord, on this earth, keep us immortal, in vigor and valor, physically and spiritually, because, Lord, it is thy work that we have been assigned over here on this earth. This body belongs unto thee, O oh Lord, which have said, thy temple of Shekinah glory. Lead us, even till to the minute details, as Daniel separated himself, not to be indulging into the works of this earth, but kept apart purely for you. Ezekiel kept apart purely for you. Use us, O Lord, to be kept purely for thee. Not having proper knowledge, Alia, if you have done anything, O Lord, forgive us. In thy grace being kept us alive, in thy love you have chastened us. But now, O Lord, lead us in thy truth forever. Father, we commit everything into thy hands. May Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us in this truth. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Father. Amen.